So Tony Gonzalez is here, chair of the planning board, calling together the planning board meeting for January 19, 2023. We'll start with a roll call. Larry Hassan. Here. James Sweeney. Here. And who are we missing? That's it. It's just the three of us, correct? Yourself. Yes. Okay, Tony Gonzalez present. <clears throat> um, before we get started, I have to read... A little message, this meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Okay. First, do we have a motion to accept the minutes for last month's meeting? Motion to accept minutes from last month's meeting. Second. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. I probably should talk about the um, applicants that are being continued. So if there's anyone for these properties, they are being continued because we are short on board members. I'm told we hope to have um, a fourth member as of next month. Is that still hopeful, Rob? It's, it's hopeful. <laughs> okay, politically correct. So if you're here for uh, return to ZBA 1449 Main Street, that's continued. Return to ZBA for 48th North Pearl Street, that is also continued. Return, return to ZBA for 124 Bradley Ave, continued. Return to ZBA for 159 North Main Street, also continued. <coughs> Anyone is here for those, we will not be hearing these this evening. All right. Um, yes. It was also, um, I don't know if we need to say it now, site plan approval uh, was continued for 137, 141 and 147 Main Street. I see that as continued. I don't know if it still is. Yes, you're, you're correct. Thank you. That one is also continued. So if you're here for 137 to 147 Main Street, we'll not be hearing this this evening. Okay. All right, Evan, um, a and R's. Right, we have two a and R's tonight. First one is 124 Manly Street. Um, that's the Father Bill's property. Uh, they are just looking to, it's basically, it's all uh, owned by, the, it's on the VA land. So pretty much they're just looking to split off the piece of land that Father Bill's is going to be on from the larger VA property. Everything looks good. All right. Is there a motion? Motion to accept. Second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Next one. All right. Second one is um, 1380 Main Street. It's the uh, Campello High Rise. Uh, they are in a um, refurbishment process. They're going to redevelop the area. Um, yeah. But they need to, there's a bit of floodplain that crosses into that parcel. Um, and having that present on the same piece of land prevents them from getting certain funding. Um, so they are splitting off that little piece of land from the rest of it. And again, everything okay. looks good. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, roll call, Arya San? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. And uh, next lot releases, Evan? Yes, we have 149 Keswick. Um, we have all the surety we need. There's no issues with releasing the uh, the lot. Straightforward. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Galavis? Yes. <clears throat> All right, no returns, uh, requests for extensions. And we have two of those. First one is Oak Hill Way. Um, they've been working on it. They just haven't finished it yet. So they're asking for a two year extension. 
Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? <clears throat> yes. Right. The next right. one? The second one is the Lincoln School on Highland Ave. Um, it's a NeighborWorks project. They've just finished their whole finance, getting financed, uh, tax credits, all that stuff, and they're hoping to uh, begin construction in the spring. So they would like an extension. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, thank you. Well, we have street acceptances, Evan. You're still up. We do, two of them. Uh, the first one is, what is it? Uh, Oscar, yeah, Oscar Ave. Um, I think, yeah, I think they're fine. I don't know if we have to do anything for them, but that's the first is, one. Is there a counselor who would like to talk about these by any chance? Uh, looks like there is. And uh, Councillor Lally, please, uh, you may address the, the board. Thank you. There is a counselor. Um, thank you, counselors. Uh, thank you, commissioners. This is um, something that something that we've brought to uh, the board before. Um, it's really pretty pretty simple uh a lot of these streets when they were created um they were never handed over to the city so they remained a private road owned by all of the people who lived on them uh but over time because they're you know woven in with the rest of the city uh they have you know you know, people people don't realize that they live on a private road. These roads, when they have potholes, the potholes are repaired. Uh, they are plowed in the winter time. They see the trucks come and pick up the trash and every other aspect of daily city life that leads them to think that their road is just their road and there's nothing else about it. Uh, so when they get to the point where the road needs to be repaved or significant work needs to be done and they try and make that happen they suddenly realize that they can't do that unless they're going to pay for it themselves the road's private these people are paying the same taxes fees and bills as everybody else uh and they're surrounded they're in the neighborhood surrounded by pri uh, by public roads it's really about getting them the same treatment as everyone else um you know there's no there's no reason for this to be a private road uh, we've brought plenty of these before the board, and I've appreciated the board's support on this. Um, it's it's pretty standard. Uh, there's no money attached. There's no timetable. The only thing we're doing is just making it possible to be paved in the future and locking it in. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Next All right. one is Newberry Street. Yep. Second one is uh, Newberry Street. It's just a portion of Newberry Street, the little bit between Spring Street and Pleasant Street. Um, it's in pretty bad disrepair, it seems to me. Um, but again, I don't know if anyone wants to speak on this topic. Do have any counselors? All right. If there are none, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Thank you. So first on the agenda, we have rules and regulations updates. Um, Mr. May, are you going to be presenting on that? Um, Evan is going to present on that. All right. Evan, you're still okay. up. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, we're just looking to update some of the rules and regs for the planning board. Um, we don't have anything concrete yet. This is really just to inform everybody that it's going to be happening soon. Um, we're looking at changing the way we uh, do A and R's a little bit. Uh, so the direct, so we don't have to bring A and R's to you guys all the time. You can uh, deal with some of them in house. Um, different uh, fee schedules and maybe some deadlines. Again, nothing's in concrete yet. Once we actually have the language you know, written out, we will distribute it to everyone with enough time for you guys to review it. And then at a future meeting, uh, 
it'll be voted on. Right. Thanks for the heads up. Nothing more we need to do on that. No vote is needed. It was just an FYI on what's upcoming. Um, okay, so this will move us down to number six, amended approval for 156 Main Street. Representative James Valeriani. So I said that incorrectly. Is the applicant. Jim, he's moving over now. Jim, do you have anybody else on your team? Um, if you're on the uh, on this agenda item, if you'd use the raise your hand um, so I can move you over. Yeah, we have, uh, should have. There uh, he is. John's coming over. And that is all I see for your team, is, unless there's somebody else. Yeah, there should be, uh, Rob. Just bear with us. There should be. Um... Oh, there's Victor. Chuck Sarah is coming mm. over. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm John D'Souza, and I got uh, Jose Andrade here, here at my office with me. Jose, is Victor joining? He should be switching yeah. over shortly. Oh, great. Okay. There, he should be there. All right, you may start. Can I start? Yes, yeah, sir. Great. Thank you, uh, Rob and uh, uh, Madam Chair, and good evening to the board and everybody else. Jim Valariani with the Medicine Group. We're assisting the Elevation Group with their permitting for this uh, retail establishment at 156 Main Street. Um, this company has been at this uh, site, at pursuing the site in this project since uh, the summer of 2020. The company has its provisional license from the Cannabis Commission. We got a special permit in uh, June, uh, summer of 2000, no, it was November 2020 from the ZBA. Originally, we were going to go on the second floor. At that time, the zoning required that we be on the second floor in the C3 zone. We, uh, in January of 21, we got site plan approval to be on that second floor. And uh, the, keep in mind, the building takes up the entire lot and uh, on-site parking is not required downtown. Uh, the company determined for various reasons, uh, being at a competitive disadvantage being one, that they wanted to be on the first floor, retail on the first floor in a downtown makes all sense. Retail on the second floor, in my opinion, and I think in the vast majority of property owners' opinions, makes no sense. They petitioned the city council and worked and obtained through a petition by one of the city councilors a unanimous uh, vote to amend the zoning to allow marijuana on the first floor. Uh, following that, we went back in front of the ZBA obtained a special permit. I know board member Sweeney was on the ZBA at that time, unanimously unanimously approved um, with a minor uh, uh, condition that we spruce the place up, take down the cantilevered sign on the corner, which I think has been um, noticeable to the city for quite some time and uh, add some goose lighting. Apparently, uh, goose lighting seems to be very uh, popular with zoning and planning boards throughout the Commonwealth. I've seen quite a bit of that. <laughs> um, 
so when before we went to zba you know i had uh, gotten in touch by email with the building department i said you know what do we need to do to go back and get to on the first floor i said is it special permit and an email as well as you know, could it be any type of site plan review i didn't believe site plan review was required a second time and uh, we were informed uh, to go and get a special permit which we did so uh, a few months went by the applicant jose and victor of elevation applied for a building permit and at that point in time, I guess it got recirculated throughout the departments as building permit applications, mostly due with cities and towns. And the concern over site plan review being needed a second time was raised. Uh, I had some communication with Rob May on that. It was my strong uh, position, uh, even uh, uh, that position remains. As of now, that site plan review was not required for us to come back with this amendment for this change in location from the second or first floor. I say that because your site plan review prior to marijuana and maybe a couple of other uses only applied to the exterior of a building in the site, not the interior. And when you look at your zoning ordinance regarding marijuana, there are about a three or four items. Uh, none of them uh, really refer to floor space or floor plans, and they don't apply to uh, building elevations. It's only connection with new construction. However, Rob and I were able to um, move ahead rather than go through an appeal process, which would have wasted a great deal of time, money, and expense. Uh, we decided when we appreciate this, uh, an amended modification filing, which we've done. The planning staff has reviewed this quite thoroughly. And I know the fire department, Ed Williams is on, as uh, Deputy Chief Williams has looked at that as well. I believe he visited the site this week as well. So uh, we know of no issues. Nothing has really changed. So we're going to be on a smaller location on the first floor. It's about 1,800 square feet. John D'Souza at uh, North County Engineers can go through that. Uh, we still have to get, after this approval, um, we have to pull our license from the city council. That's going to be another five grand. I mean, this company has been through five or six different hearings and multiple fees and they haven't even uh, gotten a building permit yet. Then we've got the cannabis fees, and I understand that's part of the process, but uh, we really need to move ahead, this company. Uh, it's very been um, just, in any event, frustrating. So uh, there'll be a post-provisional inspection by the Cannabis Commission. There'll be a final inspection by the Com Cannabis Commission. We've got to share final security and alarm plans with police and fire prior to use and occupancy. And we've got to share a, a waste management plan with your health department prior to use and occupancy. But there's no waste. It's all prepackaged marijuana products, very tight inventory control. There is very little surplus stock, very little product damage in retail marijuana. Um, we are, our service area will be downtown and anyone who's in downtown area when they're doing some shopping, visiting uh, town offices, whatever. And uh, we think it'll be a great addition. I, I think the Pretentus building uh, is, has had a number of tenants over the year, excuse me, over the years, service related tenants. Uh, this would be retail. We think it a great addition to the downtown. Uh, John can show the elevations, um, uh, showing our proposed signage, which is com in compliance with the assigned control. Uh, do you like him to bring up the, uh, the the elevations and the plans? Would you like that? Yes. John, do you have the ability to share? Uh, yep. Okay, so that's uh, that's the Pretentious building right now. We're showing the elevation sign centered above, almost uh, above the entrance to that's a that's a mm -hmm. that entrance in the middle leads to the right retail and the left elevation will be on the left under the Pretentious Plaza sign, and then the elevation sign on the side street um, uh, that is allowable. Would like to make use of that location as well for traffic coming uh, up Main Street. Um, we have uh, agreed with CBA to do some lighting. We're going to remove that cantilevered sign up on the upper right in the corner. Uh, and we're going to touch up the front, repaint as necessary, uh, refurbish that pretentious plaza sign in place. And any of the awnings that are damaged will be repaired. They seem to be in good shape. Um, now, 
I know you have in front of you a recommendation from your planning uh, department that the large uh, window to the left under the pretentious plaza sign be removed and uh, made to look like the other windows to the right. Now that's something that we're not in agreement with, neither is the owner. We don't believe it's necessary. I could tell you from my personal opinion and looking at it, the building looks fine to me, the window looks fine to me. Now it may not be consistent with uh, the downtown desire uh, for the way uh, the window should look, but that building's been been there. That was a legal modification for a previous tenant. I reiterate that uh, your your board does not have authority over the exterior of a building unless it's new construction. Um, and it's not something we believe it to be very ex expensive. We see no need for it. I've consulted with the client and we're, uh, we're not going to do it. And we're going to be, <laughs> it's, it's where we're agreeing to all kinds of other uh, uh, changes. And uh, I don't know how else to, to put it. And uh, you don't have the authority to require it. I wish I didn't have to kick this off like this, but um, we're just very surprised we're being pushed to do something that is existing and it's going to cost, that's not going to be a $200 window. I mean, and the mar, the granite underneath there, that's been removed. It's not something that uh, we have any authority over either. So, uh, Jose, why don't you go to the floor plans? So this here is uh, what currently is out there as far as the floor. Uh, you can see that the entryway, uh, the covered entryway is right here. And then there's a, a single entry point that swings in, which uh, under the code has to be uh, changed out to swing by. <clears throat> when you go in, there's another uh, door just uh, uh, right here uh, to the upper portion of where the column is. Then it's got the old uh, uh, receptional area right in here. Then it has the uh, the uh, uh, exam room or the uh, work rooms that it was previously worked for. Uh, on this side, it had storage over on the other side. There was a small bathroom for the employees right here, which is going to remain, and a handicapped bathroom uh, right here that is also going to remain. Then on the back side, there was uh, uh, basically uh, the in internal office or the back office for the uh, the operation. And then this back in here was uh, basically almost like a, a storage room <clears throat> that also had access uh, to the uh, upstairs and more than one person had access to this. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're uh, basically going to go in, we're going to remove this uh, old entry door uh, here, and we're going to put in a new entry door, whether it's a sliding door or the egress door that swings out, so we'll have to uh, conform with the code. Um, this old wall here is coming out, uh, that door is uh, coming out as well. We're going to remove a lot of the uh, old walls that were up for the uh, uh, exam rooms or the work rooms, and also where the storage rooms were. Uh, the bathrooms is staying basically where where they are. We're not uh, uh, retouching those, and uh, then we're going to revamp the area where the back office was. <clears throat> so uh, this here shows the uh, our proposed uh, floor plan. We currently have a proposed slider, but from what I understand, with the uh, walkthrough with the uh, 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 the fire chief was. Uh, we have to look at the uh, the vestibule on on the door to make sure that whatever we uh, propose works. So that is uh, something that we're going to be uh, doing. But you're going to come in. You're going to go into a secure area. We've got a, a, a security office right up here in the front. So you're going to have to show your ID at this point. And once you show your ID, this door here op uh, is uh, gets buzzed, and you walk into and you're in the waiting area. Then uh, once um, you're clear to go into the floor, you're bust through this other uh, next security door, and then you go into the uh, store. 
Uh, one of the previous revisions we had, we had some uh, shelving uh, up in this area. And there was a question in regards to the uh, the back side of the, uh, the shelving, what was there and uh, what it was was just basically another uh, false, false wall. So we extended the shelving to go all the way back to where the uh, stair wall is on that side. Um, then you come up and you got your floor area and then you got your uh, POS is right in uh, on the right hand side. Uh, you got the two bathrooms still right here. It still uh, has all the uh, access to the, uh, the patrons and to the employees. Then once you walk through this secure door here, there's a mechanical room on your left. There's a prep room on your left and the vault is uh, up on your left as well. Then we have an office on the other side, on the back side. Uh, then we have uh, online the, the sales area, which is basically its own small office. Then you have the entryway into the break room, which is on the uh, back side of where all the uh, uh, POS is at. One of the other comments that we had was we previously had uh, the two entry doors here, uh, the control point, and we actually removed those from there so that way anybody that was upstairs can gain access without having to go through our security doors and we move them to the back portion right here. So we now have the uh, <coughs> secure doors on the back side. And uh, this hallway will be here. So there's full access to go upstairs and into the basement from the other uh, 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 tents. Um, this here is basically the cameras. So all the cameras pretty much stayed where we previously had them but it shows that we have full coverage of the whole floor and also on the outside at the uh, uh, exit points as well. So uh, we'll have full coverage for the whole uh, uh, space. And then we have all the uh, uh, control points and who has access to what uh, uh, doors. So the green is basically what's known as uh, common access. So all employees have green uh, uh, cards that they can uh, uh, punch in. They, they automatically go through any of the doors that's in green. Admin access is uh, the red. So uh, you need to have some sort of uh, security clearance with the owners of the operation to gain access into those rooms, like the mechanical room uh, will be one, the security office up in the front is another, Online sales is another, and the, the prep room is uh, another. Then you got the uh, supervisor admin access. So basically, this is the uh, controlling entity, uh, their access points. So they'd have access to the control entry on the back side, the vault, and the, of the, uh, in the building. And if anybody else has uh, any questions from that, I'd be more than glad to answer. Well, I think that's about it, Madam Chair. Uh, again, the building takes up the entire lot, and uh, mm. yeah. would I, I'll open this up for the planning board. So, would you agree that this property, this location on Main Street, is a focal point of Main Street? Smack dab downtown. I'll agree to that, and I'll also agree that a photo of it is uh, pictured prominently in your town's redevelopment, uh, your city's redevelopment. Uh, 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 plan, which is quite lengthy. Uh, I, you know, I hope my bluntness about that window didn't rub uh, people the wrong way, but we've come a long way and uh, we, we, we don't see the need for the expense. We don't <laughs> need to have it done. And again, I. Okay, so thanks for answering my first question. Um, and I, I'm glad to see that the counselors did a change the ordinance and allow you to move your operations downstairs because that's going to save you huge expenses from being on the second floor. And we, um, I personally know that these businesses are in for big profits as well. Um, in addition, I think you're aware that the planning department and other committees have been working very hard to improve the um, looks of our downtown Main Street area, bringing in 
solid, credible businesses and just to improve what the city of Brockton looks like, especially on Main Street, because it's been an eyesore for many, many years. Um, so I am surprised that you blatantly said that you would not uh, change that window when you know that is something that we're going to suggest and that we want. Um, it's a little surprising to me because you are going to be saving tons of money from operating upstairs. And I also do think that it is within our authority to make this a condition, just for the record. And if I'm wrong about that, Mr. May, please correct me. Uh, it is something that we have been asking for, um, you know, but it's not something that we can, it, it's arm twisting, it's not holding a gun to their head. You know, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, again, we can't, we can't force them. I regret, I regret my bluntness. I saw the memo from planning. We thought we had worked through uh, a lot of uh, the concerns with the exception of that. Uh, I will say, and I think everybody knows, and I'm not trying to use COVID as an excuse every time I'm trying to get something past the board, but COVID has hit uh, all uh, commercial properties, <clears throat> in particular, uh, the tenanted properties, they're hurting, okay? The economy is about to potentially go into a recession. We've got a company that's been working for three or four years, expended tens of thousands of dollars. And, you know, here we are at what is a, a questionably required hearing that we said we would go through to, what are we going to do, appeal this to the ZBA and then go to Superior Court because we want to fight over conditions? We're asking for that condition not to be imposed. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if it is imposed, if it makes the project very difficult to move forward. We don't know what the expense of that window is going to be. We don't know what the expense of that elevator was going to be, if that's what's on people's minds, getting that operational for them to have gone on the second floor. It never had to be engineered. We knew it was going to be expensive, but I don't think it's fair to say, well, you're saving money on the elevator since you're not going on the second floor, and therefore we're going to, we're going to extract a concession from you now that you're going on the first floor retail. I will say, I think you, the board is, is outside of its authority and uh, would be, we, we we kindly request that that condition not be imposed. So I wasn't just referencing the elevator, but I'm glad you brought that up. I'm talking about overall operations, not looking at the bigger picture, operating on the second floor costs, you know, it's more um, labor intensive, transporting up and down. It, it's, it's, it's more inconvenient for your customers. You're going to bring in more foot traffic on the first floor than the second floor. So I'm looking at the bigger picture and I'm hoping that you will consider putting in a window that matches along Main Street with the other storefronts so that we can continue to make this city of Brockton look better and appear prettier. Um, I'm gonna use that word prettier and attract more people to the city of Brockton. I think it will also attract more people to this business. Um, I am on the business side and operations side in my company. So I'm thinking along these lines for you as well. It's not just for the window, but also for your own operations and your finances. It's a reasonable request, a window. Uh, a, a, an expensive window, Madam Chair. I mean, if there's- You didn't make the window cost, so I, I don't think you can say that. It's a window. I, I have no doubt that's mm -hmm. a, at least a $5,000 project, maybe 7,500. Now, if this board wants to consider a, 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 a reasonable condition where perhaps in five years after the company's actually making a profit, this can be revisited, I can tell you, I've got the owners here, and they're going to want to speak on this too, Madam Chair. Sure. I'm glad, this, I'm glad this is on local cable TV. I really am. Was I? Um, if I may, um, so uh, I I understand that you know everybody uh, on the planning board well, is trying, and they want this uh, pretend this plaza to be. Uh, I, I love beautiful buildings. I would like to see nice buildings. I, I like to be there and see nice buildings. But what do you, what the, the plan is, is asking from us, we don't have no authority to do that. We have to go back with the owner now to ask the owner to make any change. We, when we request to rent this, the, the space there on the second floor, 
because it was the ordinance that was written saying, okay, you can only be on second floor. We probably wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for that. Okay, that's beside the point at this point. I understand that now we're requesting to be on the first floor, which um, I agree. You want the building to be uh, in certain ways. Certain, why is it that we have to go through the motion because we're trying to rent the place to have the owner do it? Why don't the city of Brockton with all the zoning board or any member of the city or any council on the city, why not approaching the owner to come up with the resolution about- Well, that's a good point, Jose, because this building under your master plan for downtown is a candidate for grant money. So maybe the city of Brockton can find uh, somewhere in its budget to issue, say, 10 grand in grant money to have the window done. Madam Chair, it's Larry. Yes, can, can we go back to that front elevation and take a look at that window and get a better look at it? Because we kind of glossed over it and then it was just mentioned that they weren't going to do it. And uh, attorney Valeriani had mentioned that maybe given some kind of a condition to allow it to be suspended for a certain amount of time and then have it taken care of. Maybe they can work that out with the owner over time. <clears throat> I'm somewhat amenable to that, but I'd like to see that front elevation again if we could. Sure, that's a good idea. And I don't think that uh, this plan's been in work for a while, so it would it could have been brought up with the owner earlier for permission to change the window. Um, so it's not like it's a surprise. It's a surprise please, pull to us, the, please pull up the plan so that um, board member Larry Hassan can ask you some questions, please. Can you zoom in on that, please? Yeah. That's it. From here, a terrible eyesore. So we're talking about the window right there. That's when it was formally wrong. Right. Correct. Yeah. My understanding, it's the window on the left under the potenta sign that you want. Yeah, that's what I thought. Further to the left, correct? Right. And it's the old Brown Jewelers information. <clears throat> um, Madam Chair, if I could, as you um, uh, see on this sign, um, there is a, um, a, a sign on the second floor that they will be removing. It's a, a former sign that needs to come off of the building. Um, they're going to repair the awnings and there are um, drop down um, grates that they are removing. And if the board wanted to uh, have them come back in five years and take a look at um, a storefront improvement uh, um, and working with the BRA on their storefront program, I think that that would be um, acceptable. But in the meantime, uh, I'll let other people on, you know, you're, you're questioning the board right now. And then um, Councillor Lally would like to uh, address you before the public comments. So I'm, I'm done. Sure. I, I don't have any further questions about it. I, I feel I understand both sides of this. And I think in fairness to the applicants and maybe the city dealing with the owner and giving them a little more time to get their business rolling and then and then address it in some some form or manner that's mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with that because it, it honestly i literally just walked by there like two days ago i was stopping over at the uh Alvarez coffee shop and i didn't even pay attention to that so i wish i had taken a, a better look but um that would be, a, yeah, I'd be on board with that. Sorry, Larry, I'd be on board yep. with that, too. I, I think, think that's that's fair. I think Councilor Lally has his hand raised, so I'm sure there's something maybe he has to say about it. That's all I have to say right now. Thank you. All right, so if there's no Thank other further do, questions of the... Uh, Madam Chair, I, I do. Um, as far as the lighting scheme, just so we were crystal clear on it, I was just hoping they could elaborate on what that meant to them. And I know they said lights, but I would like to see what their interpretation is of, of that. Well, I, at the at the ZBA hearing, uh, 
Mr. Sweeney, uh, back in uh, July, it was uh, we didn't we didn't have lights shown on the elevations. Uh, it was something that was asked uh, by the ZBA when they approved five to, to nothing. We assumed that meant gooseneck lighting. If that was uh, uh, it, consistent with the type of lighting that the city has been seeking downtown. Now, I think that's all you can really do there because it would have to extend yeah, over the side, walk over the public way, but it's just lighting. Uh, we could put a number of gooseneck lights up along the front. I, I think that's the solution. Um, I don't know how else we could achieve, uh, uh, you know, increased lighting. We want lighting for security purposes. But that's for Don Cheryl. <clears throat> uh, and, and any of that, is that going to touch the upper floors it, like the like Brockton Beer Company and the Sycamore? No, it would be downcast, gooseneck, and it would probably be mounted either maybe above the signs to give them uh, some uh, some illumination, uh, if that's possible, or below, uh, wherever it's possible to mount. And we're happy to take suggestions from the planning department on on typical lighting that's downtown. I, I mean, my suggestion on the ZBA was, was directly uh, from how you know the sycamore building looks oh yeah that's right i do recall you suggested we do something similar to whatever sycamore building is doing so that would mean the entire the 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 front side on main street and uh the west that's what west chestnut not oh, west chestnut um west elm uh right there or east elm i guess on that on that side um you're right so that would all be touched with lighting as you see on uh, the Sycamore building was my recommendation. That's kind of why I wanted to hear what that inter what that interpretation was. Yeah, I mean, if it's reasonable, we'll do it. I mean, I think it should only extend around the front and wrap around to the end of the retail windows. I don't think it needs to go all the way down the side of the building. Uh, there are street lights, uh, but you know, I mean, if it's as long as it's not cost prohibitive, they'd, they'd like lighting as well. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, just for clarification, in, in talking with the applicant, the sign that you see, this is Elevation Dispensary, those are backlit channel letters. So they will be you know, a 3D letter that sticks out from the wall and has light illuminating the inside of the, uh, of the letter. The um, gooseneck lights would be appropriate for um, the line, a, a line of them right above the awning as it rolls up and that would shine down on both on the building and on the um, uh, sidewalk. Okay, is that plaza sign staying there that's to the left? Yeah, so we were gonna touch it up. <laughs> All right. Um... James, anything else? Um, yeah, I, I would I would like to see the building have some, you know, again, this is what I had stated on the ZBA, some lighting touching upper floors on the on Main Street and uh, on the on the small side. It doesn't have to be the entire side back. It can be from where your signage covers on that side. But that's that's what it, you know what my interpretation was as part of, you know, that stipulation. Yeah, it might be a simple LED strip uh, right on top of the black. I think that helped you out a lot too, so. I, I, um, I, I don't see any up lighting as, as an issue uh, to do along the front and then just along on the, uh, the side of the signages. Okay, if there's no other questions from the board, um, we'll open up to Councilor Lally. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to offer a bit of a point of clarification. Um, the City Council did vote to you know, approve the, the moving of this from the second story to the first story, um, basically because the initial rules that outlined where the retail marijuana locations were going uh, were pretty much, they, they just didn't 
they didn't work out and we they weren't they weren't going anywhere so it wasn't it wasn't you know a any kind of um endorsement or anything more than it was fair is fair um i i you know felt the need to to just chime in the the window i i'm not i'm not you know dying on any hill with the window but i i i did feel the need to come in and stress that you know the the planning board um is the you know duly designated and appointed board for matters like this you know we as as they trust us to do our jobs we trust them to do theirs um and i i i don't I don't know the the ins and outs of the operation of this particular business, but um, we're looking at at years, years since the city council uh, acted on the license and acted on the uh, approval to move from the second floor to the first um, to the point where the council itself is was having a discussion just weeks ago about a couple of licenses trying to figure out you know where they are are they are they holding these for some kind of value when are they going to open they you know we're having the conversation where we're we're looking around saying we have 14 licenses and we've gone you know as 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 i'll measure it um uh you know a whole term uh at least without seeing anything happen in a couple of places and we're we're wondering if you know if we're seeing anything at all so um you know just to just to come in on you know on this you know we're we're happy to see the business open we're happy to see everything get up and running um but i i was just taken a bit of back at the uh at the back and forth uh the the back and forth towards the board's authority but also the the tone in which it was held so i i wanted to just clarify that as far as the city of brockton and the city council is concerned the appropriate authority in these matters is the board um but i appreciate your time madam chair and that's all i have thank you very much constant i was opening to public comment Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to make a public comment, please use the raise your hand uh, function at the bottom of your screen. If you hover uh, down there, a uh, menu will pop up and you'll see a raise your hand icon that kind of looks like this. I apologize, I was doing uh, double duty there. So uh, I do not see anyone who would like to make a public comment. So Madam Chair, back to you. Okay. I did see a hand up. And I just sent you era. the... Yeah, you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, well, my partner Jose are pretty much put into perspective for you guys there. Uh, about that window, but I don't want to add anything to it. Um, you know, if it comes around, you know, I've, I've been trying to get into this business over five, six years ago. Okay. Um, like I was telling my partner, this is actually my last meeting. Okay. Um, you guys had uh, other businesses using that spaces for years. It wasn't an issue. Okay. Like Jose said, you know, if it was up to us, we would definitely change the way if we had to, but we don't own the building. All right. Uh, I don't see no problem with the window because the CCC has to go through it. And if, if they see a problem with that window, they will address it with us. And we have to make a change on that. All right. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm frustrated with this. I'm pretty much done with this. You guys can make whatever decision you want to make. Thank okay, you. Victor. Yeah, no, I understand. The, 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 the applicant, Madam Chair, is multiple meetings for this. I appreciate Council Lally's comments. Uh, we'd like a favorable decision uh, with the utmost uh, respect. Uh, 
and uh, if if the window is uh, remains of uh, significance, we're hoping it can be uh, a reasonably worded condition in which uh, you know this can be revisited. Uh, you know, the, again, the company hasn't even made penny one, and it's going to take another six to twelve months to get to the final stages with the cannabis commission. It's a lengthy and expensive process. I know you've had other applicants in front of you that have made the same kind of statement. So. Um, we we request the approval and uh, thank you. Um, just to explain a little to Mr. Texera, previous business owners were operating there. The business development of the city of Brockton is to improve on existing conditions. So that is why the window should be improved not because other businesses were using it that way and everyone should continue to. We're trying to improve on the city overall, which will also help your business as well, along with all the other ones in the city of Brockton. I hope that helps clarify something for you. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I did text you some salient notes that uh, yeah. would recap this conversation. And we do have one person in the audience who would like to speak now if the public comment is still open. And Ms. Crowley, you should be able to address the board now. Here? Lisa, yes, we can hear you. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, my name is President. Uh, it, it sounds like this, this um, business owner has six to 12 months to go through the, uh, the Marijuana Commission. Um, I think it's great. It's going to be a great addition. I would love to get you guys in there and get open. But also remember, this is the downtown as well. So maybe everybody can work together over the next six to 12 months and maybe look into the aesthetics of that window and the awnings because we really want downtown to be a showcase. And we really want you guys to come in here and, get, and be successful. Um, so please, you know, keep it all in mind. You know, the board, you know, make their decision. Um, I agree with the Madam Chairwoman. We want to see it look nice. We really do. And and please try and keep that in mind as you guys proceed. Thank you. And you made a nice point. Work together. Um, that's a key point. Thank you, Ms. Crowley. Anyone else, Rob? I do not have any other public comments at this time. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So um, if there is a motion, there are some conditions that we need to consider uh, definitely the lighting across the front mr may suggested a strip led and um i'm hoping that the applicant would work with us and consider maybe after two years of being in full operations after you're fully opened within two years to revisit that window and um, replace it accordingly so that it matches the rest of the stores along main street to help the city improve our appearance. Okay, and we're also going to apply for a grant as well because again, the candidate is a the bones a candidate for grant money, and we think that's a perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. However, it gets done. It doesn't. It's it it as long as it gets done. <laughs> um, and I'm not looking to cause the applicant any more money, but we are looking at improving what the city looks like. So thank you for trying to work with us. Somebody needs to make a motion. Is there a mo is there a motion? <laughs> we want to add the stip the steps after or no add the con oh. conditions with in the in the motion. With okay. your motion, the name of the prod the address and the conditions with your motion. Motion to approve 156 Main Street with the following conditions that I guess we have to be really specific about this. So the the lighting that has been discussed, um, if you can help me with this, either Rob or Evan, on how you want that language. I mean, there was talk about gooseneck lighting. There was also talk about an LED strip um, along with that window discussion to be determined with the applicant, the owner, and the BRA. And are we allowed to ask that the owner of the building be involved in that as well. 
be involved in what? I, I would I would think that the building owner would need to be involved. Right. Um, but Larry, if, yes. if I could go ahead to in, insert in your motion, we talked about um, the ZBA wanted gooseneck lighting. I would think that they would need to be evenly spaced every 10 to 12 feet across the entire facade and the length of the sign on West Elm. Um, we had talked about above that, um, the black. Um, right, the sign. I, I don't know what else to call that. The canopy. Uh, that there be a, the canopy, an LED strip to wash the front of the building, upwash. And then um, uh, we talked about two years to revisit the, the right. storefront. Is, I mean, that's pretty clear. Is that okay with the applicant and their council? Uh, yes. Look, those are our, those are the conditions. That's the motion. Second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a great night. Moving Thank on you. to amended approval two two three Thatcher Street. I don't know if we have to, if there's anyone to present this. I don't know if they have to present this. This is basically just um, amending a previous approval oh, again. I'm sorry, that's me. Okay. Um, last year, the um, uh, Public Office for Urban Affairs, um, who is the developer of the convent property on Thatcher Street, received a uh, 40R site plan review uh, approval. Um, and in the, the conditions, it said that the application or the, the approval was good for two years. However, our ordinance says that the conditions are good for three years. So we wrote that down wrong. We consider that a Scrivener's error. And we just want you to uh, uh, accept that, that it's a three year uh, approval. Okay, so it's not open to public discussion or? No, it's just a scrivener. All right, motion. Motion to accept as a three-year approval. Second. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes, thank you. All right, so we are now on site plan approval for Petronali Way. The applicant is New Vision Enterprises with J.K. Holmgren, representative. Kevin is coming over from BKA. Do we have the applicant himself? I don't see that. Yeah, I don't know. He, right. Yeah, he was in a meeting, Rob. He was going to try to make it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, you're both over. All right. Uh, good evening, Would you Madam like Chair. Or wait for Kevin. Wait. Scott, you ready to go? Yes, thank you. Right. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board Member Scott Farrier from Home Grand Engineering for New Vision Enterprises, uh, along with Kevin Patton from BKA Architects. And uh, what we have before you tonight is a site plan approval for property on Petronelli Way, uh, immediately to the right of 28 Petronelli Way that's currently under construction. Uh, the property is uh, you know, the site of the the big parking lot that's between Petronelli Way and Franklin Street. So we've had numerous meetings uh, with city officials on this uh, on this project. We've uh, received ZBA approval in September. We've met with the planning board and BSC, uh, who is the city's consultant on uh, the roadway that'll directly abut this building, uh, Hagler Way. Uh, we've gone to two tech review meetings, and we we think we're pretty much at the point now, Madam Chair, where we've uh, addressed everybody's concerns in in the city, in the uh, in the consultants, and certainly the planning department. So, uh, just a quick overview of the project: it's a, a proposed 50-unit residential building. Uh, we have 50 parking spaces, 25 uh, ground-level garage spaces, 
uh, six spaces outside the property, 19 uh, spaces that more than likely would be across the street at the, uh, the city of Brockton parking garage from the parking authority. Uh, all of our utilities for the project will come in off of Franklin Street. Currently, there is no drainage on that massive parking lot. As part of our project, we are proposing stormwater management. So that's a, a great improvement uh, for the neighborhood and, and it brings us into stormwater compliance. Uh, I'm sorry, Scott, I was trying to get in there. Are you, do you have a plan to put up for us? I hate it when you ask that. I do. Now let's see if it goes up. <laughs> Let me see something. Not yet. You should be a pro at this by now. Rob can give you a hand. Oh, hold on. You're starting oh, to share your screen. Something. We got it. Oh, Good go. job. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. So again, Petronelli Way, bottom of the screen. Uh, marvelous Ma Marvin Hagler Way will be to the immediate right of the building. Uh, that's the uh, road that will be constructed, uh, designed by BSC that uh, that we're working with in, in all of our meetings. So again, the, the building itself, we have a, an entrance off of Petronelli Way to get into the, the podium parking area and then an exit uh, off the side of the building uh, to eventually exit out to Franklin Street. Uh, I think the We've gone back and forth with the planning department, but a, a big thing that they were concerned with was the amount of curb cuts on Petronelli Way and uh, coming up with a way to, to kind of decrease the amount of curb cuts there. So I, I think we've done that to the to the planning department's satisfaction with the uh, inclusion of all of this concrete sidewalk uh, right here in front of the building. There still will be a curb cut to get into the garage, a curb cut to get into the parking lot and a curb cut. Uh, that is the access easement out to Franklin Street that was part of the 28 Petronelli Way. So there still are going to be curb cuts, but we've we've tried to soften that with the uh, with the advent of this uh, concrete sidewalk that we proposed. So uh, that's really a, a quick overview, Madam Chair. Maybe I'll kick it over to Kevin from BKA, and he can give you a quick rundown on the on the building design and amenities, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, is there a way that I could um, get or switch the screen share over to me? Stop sharing, thankfully. All right. Hopefully, I'll have a little luck here. All right. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes, All we right. can. I guess I see how that's done, Scott. <laughs> I guess I lose seeing all of you. Um, all right, so as Scott kind of laid out <clears throat> the uh, orientation of the building on the property and the parking, uh, the building has is mostly over parking. There's um, very little ground floor constructed space. The We do have a lobby, uh, entry lobby with a mail room, elevator, stairs that's accessed from the um, the six surface parking spaces through the door here and then the 25 garage spaces are accessed into the to the lobby through here we have a secondary uh, egress stair on franklin street there's a trash area here with a door that uh, you know the bins will be rolled out for uh, when they're picked up and then we have two utility spaces, a, uh, an electrical and water sprinkler space. And this is the, the garage access. There are opportunities here and there for uh, some planting beds. Um, and then we have the, uh, the additional uh, garage entrance and exit out onto the, uh, the one-way uh, access alley. The uh, floor plate, we have 50 units. There are um, 35 one bedrooms and 15 two bedrooms. The two bedrooms are in this kind of reddish color. And then the, 15, the um, one bedrooms are in the greenish color. 
They're all accessed off of a double loaded cord or spine that runs the length of the building. And at the knuckle, um, where the inside corner uh, occurs, there's an amenity space. <clears throat> We've programmed this so that it would be a double height space. So it might be uh, a really interesting place to be in there. Uh, and you'd access it from the third floor uh, and maybe a, a fitness uh, wellness program. And then again, on the fifth floor where you'd also have a double height space uh, could be a co um, a co working space or business space. Uh, this is a, a lighting plan. So we have our typical garage lighting, um, but we also, the second floor cantilevers out over the, the first floor. So we have some uh, soffits that will get down lights and they're located sporadically around the building as you follow my cursor. Um, they're on all four sides of the building, including Hagler Way. Uh, the elevations, the building is designed as a brick building with um, fiber cement panel accent. Uh, so on your screen, the dark area is being rendered as, as brick. Um, and these tall rectangular panel patterns are fiber cement. And then at the base, we, in order to increase the scale and give a, a bottom to the building, we've introduced a manufactured stone bands uh, the building is, is called Ringside. We're next to Petronelli. Um, so we've kind of uh, been working with a horizontal banding uh, uh, on the building. We also might, might notice a fun little pattern in here. These are required ventilation uh, openings for cross ventilation for the garages. However, we've filled them with a, a decorative metal um, grating and um, I'm just going to zoom in real quick. And we picked out a, a nice waterfall pattern. Um, in our conversations with the planning department, we've tried to reinforce the, the sidewalk uh, and its volume or space by adding these uh, canopy um, elements over each one of those. All four sides are, are treated the same way as far as the building material and, and um, its uh, vocabulary. So the rendered view, uh, the lighter color is the brick. Uh, and then we can pick up the banding around the base. We have a multicolored uh, gray fiber cement panel system. We've articulated the, the fenestration uh, in, the, in the brick areas where we have a single opening at the top. We've combined them in the middle two uh, pairs of floors, and then the single opening at the base. And this is just a play on scale to give some more interest to the building. Primary entrance to the building is, is located here at the knuckle. We have the Petronelli Way uh, garage entrance here and the, uh, the alleyway entry and exit over here. You may pick up, it might be a little hard to see, but you may pick up uh, Juliet balconies. Some of the units do have Juliet balconies. Oh, um, before it gets picked up and commented on, I did not render the, um, the sidewalk correctly that comes through here. So that is described properly on Scott's plans. This is a view of the building from Franklin and the, the access alleyway in here. The uh, entrance exit from the stair tower element that's here is located underneath a little projecting canopy. And then we have the garage or um, excuse me, the trash uh, uh, entry exit located um, so that they wheel the barrows out to a deeper sidewalk in this area uh, waiting to be picked up for uh, from the access alleyway. This is a view of the building of Hagler and Petronelli. And what we've done also to reinforce the whole idea of the horizontal banding is we've taken every other course of the brick and recessed it one half inch. So it'll give a nice um, rustic rustification to that, that brick and create some interesting shadow lines. And then down here, you can start to pick up the, uh, the canopy frames to help 
contain that volume of the sidewalk and reinforce um, the use of the sidewalk and what it's like to be down there. This last image, what I did is I uh, placed the building model into a Google Earth uh, 3D model, which is why these buildings all look like they're made out of Play-Doh. Um, but you have the, the Hagler Way here, Petronelli here, Franklin is, uh, sorry, excuse me, right here. And we are 67 uh, feet tall from the point of access at the main entrance. However, there's so much slope going along Petronelli and Franklin. You can see how the building really works with the, uh, the streetscape. Now, this, is, this Google image is prior to the construction of the garage and then the new uh, Trinity residential building down here in the lower right-hand corner. And that's the overall of, uh, of the project from, from the architectural. Kevin, did you have a night shot? Uh, it really unfortunately, looked, it really looked I do nice not, on the ones we saw. Yes, I can absolutely produce that for you, Rob, and we can work through any additional lighting that you might think the city would, uh, would like to see on it. Very nice. Because I know Jim had, uh, had issues with lighting. And I think you had done a really good job with that, and I wanted to show it off. <laughs> uh, I had one done for uh, Main Street, uh, and you'll see that in a couple of weeks. Ooh. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, should I shut the, the screen off, or are we going to refer to any of these drawings if there are any questions? Uh, planning board members, do you have questions? Yeah, Madam Chair, if I could. Uh, the the plan looks really good. How deep are the sidewalks? Right, so I'm going to go all the way back up to, and Scott might have some additional information, but what I want to point out here, when I zoom in, this, this line represents the property line. So I believe we have a overall six feet here, but I've kept the building back on Hagler. Okay. Um, which I felt was important to allow this street to function a little bit better. Mm -hmm. On Franklin, Franklin's more of a utilitarian kind of street. Um, it's more of a service type street. So I did build up to, to the property line. Uh, so you have your, your current sidewalk depth that's out there today. All right. Yeah, I think that works well. I think it looks a lot better too. Um, uh, I guess... Then you I guess can see my... we've added depth down on Petronelli. Um, okay. And we're trying to take advantage of some planting opportunities there. Okay. And just my last question, you know, once you get approval, when when would you be shovel ready? Well, as you know, BSC is doing the engineering on the street. That needs to get constructed. Uh, Joe does not want to do any work prior to the street uh, being done. Okay. Uh, the Petronelli building is nearing completion, um, and Joe is also um, putting in a, a bid on another property in Brockton. So he's got to work through what, what the priority is on that. Okay. It Wait, wouldn't... Questions? It, uh, yeah, I think, I think that kind of wraps it up for me. Uh, thank you. All right, Larry, anything? Madam Chair, I'm just looking at some comments here too. I don't know if, they've, if this has already been cleared up, but there was talk about the location and functionality of the sewer line. Has that been um, yes. on the plan, Scott? Yes, we did. We, uh, right. Yeah, we had the sewer going out to Franklin Street as requested. Okay, thank you. That's all I see. Well, Scott, can you just show that to us real quick though? Because I know they asked you to separate it from the water line, but we were having difficulty figuring from the out where drain. Was, or for the uh, yeah, sorry, from the, <laughs> the the drain to the garage. Uh, but we were having difficulty trying to figure out where the sewer actually comes from and goes to. Oh. Okay. Oh, um, everybody, see this plan. Yes. yes. Okay, good. So this heavy black line is the sewer line going out to Franklin Street. Uh, 
the so that is the sewer line that handles the runoff from within the parking garage. So the the parking garage, the trench drains in the garage want to be included into the municipal sewer, not into the on-site uh, drainage system. So we have uh, trenches shown on the within the garage. They get piped uh, on the garage floor into an oil water separator into a sewer manhole and out into the sewer line on Franklin Street. The uh, domestic sewer, I'll call it, the, the sewer for the units themselves, comes out of the utility room and ties into that sewer manhole. So it's a, it's a separate line leading to the oil water separator. Once the oil water separator dumps into the sewer manhole, then the domestic sewer can tie into that as well. So there's just one curb cut uh, for the two different lines. All right, thank you. Any other questions, Larry, before we open it up to public? Okay, Rob, anyone? Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any uh, comments, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen, and we will um, open up your mic to be available to speak. And Madam Chair, at this time, I do not see anyone with their hand up. All right, thank you. Is there a motion? I don't see any uh, any special stipulations on this one. Am I correct? It was only a, a notation about. I think they it was mentioned uh, design details for the continuous sidewalk at each vehicle entrance and exit must be included in the plans. But I think Mr. Patton had mentioned something about that in his drawing. It wasn't on there, but Scott, it's on yours, right? Yes, sir. It is. Okay. Okay. So mo motion to approve with design details for the continuous sidewalk at each uh, vehicle entrance and exit must be included in plans. Second. All right, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, folks. Okay. Next, we have a definitive subdivision for 21 Flint Road. We have Monty Construction as the applicant and J.K. Holmgren representative. Again, Madam Chair, board members, I believe uh, Attorney Burke is open to come on in this one as well, Rob. I will move him up. I got it. Scott, you'll be ready with the plan, please. Hope so, Madam Chair. <laughs> I have all the faith in you. Remember, Attorney Burke charges by the hour, so let's <laughs> I've been enjoying listening. Uh, it, it, Mr. Uh, uh, Madam Chairman and members of the Planning Board, uh, this is a matter that you've seen before. Uh, the uh, developer brought forth a plan to the Planning Board with the request to go to the Zoning Board, which uh, was uh, met with some opposition. Uh, and a part of that discussion uh, resulted in a new plan based on suggestions provided by at least one of the planning board members that was subsequently brought before you and it was uh, authorized to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. We then made the trip to the ZBA. Uh, we received a favorable decision based on this plan and we're bringing it back to uh, the planning board with the hope it will approve uh, the subdivision of the various adjustments uh, that are created both of the uh, existing lots to create lot A, lot B, and have a remaining lot C and D. C and D are uh, still meet the zoning requirements uh, with the uh, transfer, and the uh, variances that were granted were for dimensional issues related to lot A and lot B. So Scott has presented the plan, and I'll let him produce it, but it's our hope that you will, in fact, approve the subdivision. Thank you, Attorney Burke. As uh, Madam Chair, board members, as Attorney Burke said, when we were before you folks, I believe it was back in August, uh, I think the, the one comment we had, we had a lot line here for lot A that kind of cut right behind the house. So it was suggested that we uh, kind of fatten that up a little bit, which we did. Uh, we went from, I believe the previous plan, we had about 10,000 square feet on this lot A, which is the existing house number 21 Flint. We uh, bumped the lot out so it's in line with lot B. 
So that lot now has 24,500. Uh, that was one of the, I believe, conditions that you folks had in your uh, preliminary decision. And that's the, uh, the layout that we brought before the Board of Appeals. So I think that, uh, I think that addressed adequately the, the concerns the board had at that time. Thank you. I'll, I'll open it up for the planning board. Um, is, has the driveway on lot B been reduced to 20 feet or less? We bumped it down to 16 feet, Madam Chair. As suggested by, uh, by Howard Newton. Thank you. Uh, planning board members? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, what we've seen this a few times. I don't, your question was just answered about the driveway. So I don't, I don't have any questions about this. All right. James, anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with it too. Okay. Public um, comment, Rob? Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a public comment um, or a question, please use the raise your hand icon and we will open up your microphone. And I have one comment. And uh, if you would state your name and your uh, and address for the record, please. I hope you're going to hear me. My name is Anna Maria Cubis. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I am I am the owner of uh, uh, Seven Flint Road, which I am next to this. Uh, gentleman who is uh, planning to uh, build a house. Uh, my only worry is that um, when he spoke to me a couple of times, he mentioned that he planning to build a house next to his. Um, from what I received from you, that he's dividing the property to four lots. My question is, is he planning to build a four houses? And now when I'm looking, uh, seeing the lot number A, uh, how the lot gonna have access uh, from what side? Sure. I am the one on the corner, on the bottom, on the screen. Scott, yeah. this is only two lots, correct? If yeah, if I could address that, Madam Chair, to to make the to make the lots work, we're basically creating four new lots. Three of those lots have existing houses. Lot C and D have houses out on East Street. Those lots had almost two acres of land, all of this back land heading pretty close to Flint Road. Uh, lot A, our new lot A, is the existing house number 21. So the only lot that will be new, the only new uh, lot that'll have a house on it is this lot right here, lot B, which will have a driveway off of Flint Road. So the existing house number 21 Flint has their existing drive uh, right here, Madam Chair, that's remaining in the same location. It'll just be this new house on lot B. So it is a, a creation of four lots, but out of the four lots, uh, there are three existing homes on those four lots, the one on Flint, the two on East Street. Okay, thank you. So if I may add something, so the lot number, uh, lot, lot B, that's the only lot uh, when uh, the owner are planning to build the house, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other hands, Rob? No other hands, ma'am. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. All right. Thank you. We thank, thank the you. board for its time. Thank you, folks. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, next up, we have st Definitive Subdivision uh, 20 Winter Street. P. Joe Elias is the applicant with J.K. Holmgren. Scott, we just are not going to miss you tonight, are we? <laughs> well, luckily, uh, I'm, I'm quicker than the first one, Madam Chair. <laughs> yeah. I've already missed supper, so I'm trying to go fast. All right. So, uh, again, Scott Farrier, Holmgren Engineering. Uh, this application, Madam Chair, if I can show it, is... Uh, a, a plan that we had before you, uh, property owned by Pedro Elias. Mr. Elias and his family uh, live at 20 Winter Street. 
and it's it's kind of a, a strange situation. They they have their existing house on 20 Winter Street. Uh, they also their lot encompasses, I guess, what you would call some back land uh, that front, fronts on Merritt Ave. Uh, so we came before you folks uh, again back in October for a preliminary plan to divide the property, his existing 30,000 square foot lot into two lots shown as lots A and B. The uh, You folks granted preliminary approval, which allowed us to go to the Board of Appeals. The interesting thing with the Board of Appeals is the existing home on 20 Winter Street and all of the lots on Winter Street are in an R2 zone, uh, which has different uh, zoning requirements, zoning requirements of only 7,500 square feet of area. Uh, the land, the back land and all of the other lots on Merritt Ave up to Oscar, all are in an I1C that require 30,000 square feet. So uh, we came with this plan that you're looking at to you folks in October, we went to the ZBA in November. ZBA granted uh, approval for the lots as shown. So we'll be creating uh, a new lot B that'll uh, be the site of a, a single family home that Mr. Elias and his family will uh, will be building and moving into, and then they'll, uh, they will sell lot A. Uh, so I'm sure you folks remember, we had a little bit of a discussion with you folks at, at the preliminary meeting about possibly connecting Merritt Ave uh, back out to Winter Street. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't think it was, I don't know that anybody really had a, a, a real big opinion on it. Uh, it. It was kind of floated out there. We said we would, uh, we would look into it. When we got to the Board of Appeals, the, the Board of Appeals, uh, after hearing from the neighbors, was, was pretty clear that they did not want to see Merritt Ave continued out to Winter Street. Uh, so that's uh, the reason why we, we didn't do that at all, uh, as was discussed at the planning board meeting previously. So Winter Ave currently dead ends uh, about 130 feet from Winter Street. It'll remain that way. Uh, the one comment that we, or a couple of comments that we did get from Howard Newton, uh, he was concerned just with Merritt Ave in this lower location. It's kind of a flat area, uh, doesn't really have any drainage. So he asked if we could include a little bit of drainage. So we've added, try to zoom up. We added two catch basins uh, in front of our new lot that will tie into a manhole, tying into the existing city uh, drainage system. So uh, that'll help out with the any drainage uh, out on Merritt Ave. Uh, besides that, Madam Chair, we have an infiltration system proposed for the new house. Uh, it's a, uh, a home with a, a two car garage, uh, driveway leading up to it. Uh, I think everything else has been addressed, ma'am. That's, that's my understanding too. Any questions from the planning board, Larry? I, I don't have any questions. I'm just looking at um, a couple of things here, but I think he's somewhat addressed it. Um, there is a fire hydrant. We don't need another fire hydrant. I saw some notes about that. Is that, are you clear on that, Scott? And also just a note about once the catch, catch, catch basins are completed, they'll repave because yep. they're going to do a little bit of digging and excavating on those areas, correct? Right, exactly. Yep, we'll have some some trenches there for the sewer, the water, and now for the drainage as well. And there was a fire hydrant already on Merritt, right? Because there was a yes, sir, directly that. across the street. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, that's all I had for. All right, uh, James. I think um, those are my questions too. All right, thanks. Um, Rob, public comment. Ladies and gentlemen, those wishing to make a public comment, and here we have Councillor Lally, who I will promote. Uh, anybody else who has comments, please use the raise your hand icon so that we can uh, open up your microphone. Councillor Lally. Thank you for the promotion, Mr. Director. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I'll be very quick. Um, the primary concern that I had gotten from constituents who live on Merritt and uh, constituents who live on Winter was uh, they were uh, very thoroughly opposed to connecting Merritt to Winter. So with that addressed, their, their major concern was out of the way. Uh, so I do thank the, um, the developer for adapting to that. Um, 
and that was really that was really what they had. So I, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, any other hands? Uh, Madam, there are Madam Chair, there are no other hands up at this time. All right. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Yeah. With, with standard, standard conditions. conditions. Thank you, Larry. Second. Second that. Second that. All right. Roll call. James. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Bonnie Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. All thank right. you, Madam we'll Chair. Your, we'll have your dinner, Scott. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay. Well, now we are on to definitive subdivision Arthur Estates. Rockwood Reality Realty Trust is the applicant, and we have Jacobs Driscoll Engineering. And um, before we start, we did get an email from Deputy Chief Edward. Is he on? He had multiple meetings tonight, so I'm not sure if he's. Uh, no problem. Yeah, he said he'll be listening in, but he might not be able to actually um, talk to us. Okay. No, no, no problem. I'm on the next one, actually. I'm on another one now. All right. I'm here, Adam Chair. All right, good, thanks. Um, is David uh, Doyle a part of your team or is he in a butter? I think he's in a butter. He's in a butter, okay. Mr. Director. Well, I'll, we'll wait until after the pre presentation. Thank you. Now who's presenting? Uh, Phil, I believe you would. Uh, I thought uh, Mr. Driscoll was going to be on. Sure, sure. Or Ed Jacobs. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Ed Jacobs will be joining us, but uh, Greg uh, definitely has some uh, items he'd like to talk about with the board. I mean, the, the sum is, uh, and before Greg takes over, I think that we left last meeting. Yeah. Uh, the board actually suspended to get clarification on some points, and uh, hopefully they got that clarification, and we're just here to uh, in furtherance of that. Yeah, that was my understanding as well. I could put the plans up, but uh, my understanding was that the, the board wanted to reach out to um, the engineering department for some, some questions that they had uh, on that side. And um, we provided some info to the city engineer uh, in the meantime. I uh, haven't seen anything back. But. We did get clarification or confirmation that the drainage issues are the jurisdiction of the engineering and the stormwater authorities. So um, that that was helpful. Okay. So you did do a full presentation last week. If you don't have anything new to add, you don't have to just go through the whole presentation just to do it. You let us know. What would okay. you like? I mean, yeah, I can put the plans up if you'd like to see them, but mm -hmm. otherwise, um, please. That's sure, kind of where we're at. Plans up and see if uh, the board members have any questions. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, there was a question in related to the groundwater. Um, we have submitted uh, additional documents provided by the DEP from local well logs that showed the groundwater and the bedrock depth. Um, and I believe that was one of the chief concerns with the planning board, although we had addressed that or a lot of that with conservation. Um, but we did submit that, uh, I believe Greg submitted that to the um, engineering department, uh, if I recall. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions, James or Larry? I don't, I don't have any questions at this time. Uh, I don't either. Again, that was one of the concerns was whose authority was or who need to be concerned about the um, drainage issues in the water. So again, that is, so for the public comment coming up, that is the jurisdiction of the engineering and the stormwater authority. It'll be addressed there. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. It's Larry, just um, a, a notation that I'm just reviewing too. So, I mean, their final approval will be contingent on receiving a stormwater permit, right? That's, that's what I'm seeing for notations from the staff. There are two two waivers right for this meeting here there's wait two waivers okay um 
Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, the two waivers that we requested, uh, one was the length of the road. Um, I just want to note that the road is currently 1,300 feet. We're increasing it 150 feet. The town, the city of Brockton built the road to 1,300 feet as a dead end. Um, I've never had a project approved as a dead end. Every town wants a cul-de-sac for emergency vehicles to turn around. And I feel like we're improving the situation that's there now. And I know that the last meeting, the current landowner said that he leaves the gate open to make it easier for plowing um, and the trash pickup, um, which is, seems like a nice gesture for him, uh, considering the liability that could be. Um, but by putting a cul-de-sac there is, is going to permanently improve that. Um, and secondly, the sidewalk um, is the other waiver, uh, which we are continuing the sidewalk on one side of Arthur Street, um, as Greg's showing on the plan, um, which I would reference looking up on Arthur, that's the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, um, where the uh, yellow erosion control starts, um, it's all wooded right there. And I went by there last week. Um, I'm not sure if neighbors or whatnot, but everybody throws all their debris there. Um, and there is no sidewalk maintained in this area. So that's why we're asking for the waiver because it's not even used on, on this area. So I'm not asking um, for something that I, I would anticipate people would use. I feel like putting it on this, the right-hand side of the road is more than adequate and it services both of the homes that we're proposing. So I just want I just want yeah. bring people up to speed that might not be um, have, have you guys have a lot of things ahead of you so I just figured I'd address that. Thank you. Okay, Rob, uh, public comment. Uh, Hi, yes, James. Did you have anything? First, let's start. Did I? I'm good. You? Okay, thank you. Good. Yeah. First, let's start with Councillor Lally, who is already in as a panelist. Thank you, Mr. Director. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, you know, I'm I'm back. <laughs> I'm I'm here to uh, sort of restate both uh, my concern uh, and my opposition to the project, as well as the constituents uh, I represent, uh, their concerns and their opposition as well. Um, the simple fact is that it this isn't something that uh you know the folks around the area at the very least have a lot of faith in uh because we we go back to it being built on top of a spring um you know the people around that area who you know i see and i talk to who either call me about this or i've gone and and, and met with uh, everybody's got pumps, everybody's already got water in their basement, they already have these problems, which could only really be uh, worsened by this development. Uh, on top of that, you know, it's, it's less of a water comment, I know you want us to stay away from it, but I think it's important to mention, um, there is a significant uh, historic and cultural uh, connection with this property and the village as a whole. We're looking at a property that, um, you know, was was a place that people throughout the entire village, uh, they've all got stories, they've all got memories. It's It's got a, a significant thing. It really should be looked at more of as a historical site than a place to build a couple of houses that are you know really identical to a lot of the construction that we see uh everywhere right now it's it's something that the the neighborhood has been you know very unified in their message on um they have concerns they have problems they're already grappling with uh they have you know, no appetite or interest for this kind of uh, disruption in the neighborhood. And on behalf of the residents and as the counselor and as, as a resident of the ward, um, I just want to express my concerns again and my opposition and, you know, put my faith in the board. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, I'm not, Madam Chair, uh, I, Mr. Lally has continuously stated uh, uh, statements that are not true. There is zero historical value to this property. It's private property. At no point should anybody have ever gone on that property. Um, when we first went to the zoning board, he told all his constituents that we were connecting the road when in reality, we had this plan for the, um, the board to review and anybody um, in the public uh, could take a look at it. And we never proposed to connect it. Um, and he's talking about water, which we've addressed at every single meeting. And he's never even looked at any of the documents. And he says the same thing every time. It's not fair that we have to come back and he says the same thing when we've addressed it and my professionals have addressed it. These engineers go to school for years to get their license and be able to put their, their skill on paper. And somebody comes in and makes false accusations, that's not fair. So I, I feel like we've addressed Mr. Lally and Ms. Dubois' um, concerns, which seems more political than factual. So I'm not used to that. I know you guys do. This is you guys are on the planning board in Brockton, but in other towns I work on, this is not a political forum, and that's how it feels like they've used it. So, um, okay, thank you, um, Mr. Mr. Lally um, did have his hand up. Or excuse me, Councilor Lally had his hand up. I don't know if he wants to rebut, but there are two um, other abutters who would like to speak. The first is. Douglas Wedge. Mr. Mr. May, and uh, I'm sorry, this is Ed Jacobs, PMP. I have my hand up. I don't know if you're ignoring me or what. But oh, I'm sorry, Ed, I didn't see That's you. all right. I just want to say, and I, I agree with the owner, and, and the reason I have my hand up is this is our third meeting, and the same abutters keep talking about the same issues. I mean, at some point, the, chair, the chairwoman, with all due respect, needs to just say, We've heard enough of this. Unless you have something new to bring up and something we haven't heard before, there's no sense bringing it back up. We're just going to give the same answers, which are based on fact. I don't understand why this just keeps getting dragged on. We do have to open it to public comment. And I agree that if we can't hear redundant comments, but if somebody wants to do a refresher, a brief refresher, but please no redundant comments from um, anyone with their hands up. Mr. Douglas Wedge, your microphone should be open. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, a couple points. That gentleman that said there's no historic value. Well, prior to their ownership and their involvement, there is historic value. So he's speaking from the time he's been involved. He's not a city lifelong resident as I am. And uh, so he has misstated that. Also, the fact that we're concerned about the blasting that will have to take care, because I have property that adjoins that. We're on ledge. We've heard this. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did someone say something? Continue, Mr. Wedge. No, let's continue. The uh, fact the ledge will have to be messed with is definitely going to have an effect on the water. Uh, because if you're not drawing water from a spring slash well, that water will sit there and rain like tonight or worse, will then sit on top of it and cause problems for the residents. We all have seen what climate change is doing to the water levels and more intense weather. This is not the time to be doing that. If we're addressing the same things, it's because the builder and the owner and the attorney do not get the opposition and the reasons for the opposition. Might I also say, they're saying that's an improvement. That's their opinion, not the countless abutters and neighbors who feel it's not an improvement. 
also there is nothing to stop this group in the future to make some sort of waiver or attempt to go to zoning board to get some change in frontage to build more houses on the cul-de-sac. That's my brief statement. I am absolutely opposed to this as so many of the neighbors are, as you've seen at many of the meetings, it is not necessary. We have taken an awful hit up in our area for clustering houses on top of each other. This is not a necessary project. This will not improve Brockton. And there is a historic nature to that. I can remember as a child going up and filling glass jugs with water when it was owned by Simpson Spring. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wedge. Mr. Doyle, hang on just a second. Uh, Mr. Doyle, you should be yep. can able you hear me? to speak now. Yes, we can. Uh, very good. Good evening, folks of the panel and um, Driscoll Engineering, Rockwood Realty, and their attorney. Um, we've been through this a lot. Um, you know, I've mentioned about that there's animals, deers, and everything else that lives up there. But the biggest thing is the water up there. Um, I get flooded out after, I, you know, my pumps come on after about three inches of rain. You know, any engineering or anything that they've done has been through their own people. It hasn't been done through an independent thing. The people on the street here can't afford to hire their own independent person. The town or the city can't either. Uh, what's basically going to happen is... You know, once when they leave and they get these houses built up, there's any water that comes, additional water that comes into these basements. You know, we're, people are going to have to hire lawyers to go back after them for any damages. Um, the other thing that's come up that I've just noticed is um, on the environmental part. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department back in December has put up that there are certain woodpecker species that have become the endangered species protected. There are woodpeckers that live up there. I don't know what the species are. I never could see them, but I hear them first thing in the morning and then around supper time. The morning one is a pain in the ass. But anyway, um, you know, we're just tired of this. It's been going on since last summer, this whole thing. Um, the people have to keep on fighting to stop this project. Uh, the other conditions I've got to ask is, I don't know if they've said that they would or not. The part of Ridge Street that comes down to Merton and Merton that goes up to... Mm -hmm. awesome and thing that they would not build on that that's one of the conditions along with some type of a buffer i know i'm sorry david you dropped out oh can you hear me now um, yes we can okay what i was saying about the last part meeting that we had was about the um the unfinished part of Ridge Street and the Merton that goes up to Blossom and to Cary Hill Street. Um, I don't know if that was put under a condition or not that they wouldn't touch that along with some type of a buffer zone. Um, but I'm just asking that the people on Ridge Street, the people that connect to Merton Street, um, I don't know how the people on Blossom Street feels, but you know they're gonna be dynamiting up there. There's no question. I've lived up here for years. The pool that was put in next door to me at number 60 Ridge Street, um, just as I was moving back in 85, they had a dynamite. There's a house, I think at 90 Merton Street, uh, which kind of a bus that property. They had to dynamite the road to get the utilities in on Merton Street. Um, it's just ridiculous what the neighbors have to go through. I'm asking the board to vote this down. <clears throat> Thank you. Um... Next person is Mr. Ed Rose. Hang on. Mr. Rose, you should be able to address the group now. Hi, Rob. This is Ed Rose, Rocky Mountain Spring Water. Um, Adam Chairman, I just wanted to say I've been listening to the folks and I appreciate the neighbors' concerns, but the, what the board needs to know is a few things. A, Simpson Spring never on the site. Blue Hill Springs on the site. and It has been a water supply for many, many years and a good one at that. When they built the two houses up on North Cary Street, which is property owners, we never got notified of that. They sent it to a wrong address. Those two houses that received waivers from the appeals board contaminated that well. So whatever historical value there was to the well, and make no mistake about it, as a drinking water supply, 
we would have preferred to leave that site open. We've owned that site since 1998. It was a fantastic water site, albeit very, very small. Right now, it is a useless water supply. You, it is no longer potable. It is no longer permitted by the DEP. So as a water supply, there is no historic value to it because it can't be used for potable drinking water. That's number one. Number two, I provided this team with DEP public record well logs that shows that elevation on where groundwater is and where ledges, okay? They're confusing groundwater and spring water. Our spring is coming up through fractures of bedrock. It could be coming from 400 feet below the surface. What the well logs up there show from DEP, this is all, this is all public record. Bedrock is at 15 feet, I believe, in the ground, or 16 feet, and the groundwater was similar. There is a lot of runoff up there, but it has nothing to do with the groundwater up there. And, second, and third of all, when we bought the property, as everyone is very well aware, Merton Street is already a permitted road. It was never improved. It's a dirt road. That can be built out as of right, which would make all of these lots on Merton Street, which we're calling Arthur Street, as A&R permitted lots. I went to Jason when we went to him a year ago and I asked him that the neighbors did not want it cut through, that they would, if we're gonna do anything, which now I'm forced to do something because I can't use it as a drinking water supply. So I have to sell the property. I have no choice. It just can't sit vacant like it has for the last year. So I told him to put a cul-de-sac in rather than connect the road. If I had known there was gonna be so much opposition and so much foolishness on a, simple, on a simple circle, and that's all this is, is a simple circle, I would have built the road myself and then not got in front of any boards because I would have had all A&R lots up there, which I still can do. But I'd prefer to see this simple cul-de-sac approved because this gentleman, Jason, is a quality designer He's a quality home builder. And I picked him specifically because he'd do a nice job in that neighborhood. And I have owned that property for almost 30 years up there. And we've been good stewards of the land. We've had to fence it off. It used to be all trash up there. They used to burn cars at the top of the hill. So I know that neighborhood as good as any of that's talking right now, because I've owned it for almost 30 years. And my business partner owned it 20 years prior to that. So under our collaborative okay. ship, we've controlled okay. that site for 50 years. So we know it better than anyone, trust me. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Gross. Thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Are there thank any you. other abutters um, who would like to speak at this time? And I do not see anybody with their okay. hand up. Um, All right, is there a motion? Motion to approve with uh, the following conditions, add catch, catch bases to the new cul-de-sac on Arthur Street, provide the proper wellhead declassification procedure, which has been followed and completed with the Mass DEP. Second. All right. A roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I believe that was our last applicant. Okay. There is no other business. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Juan Gonzalez. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Is there anything we need to come in to sign before we sign off? Yes. So we need we need to come in and physically sign. Wait. I wait. believe the Petronelli Way subdivision still needs signing. Okay, well, I put a text out maybe. I'll be sending emails in the morning. Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. Have a good night. All right. Tony, are you fine? You were saying, wait, wait, wait. Um, I, I, were there waivers? Oh, goodness gracious. All right. We have to vote on the waivers and we have to vote on, uh, are they have to tell us their surety. So they've left the room, but we are still, 
um, rolling. If somebody would take back their motion to uh, adjourn. Rescind motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor to rescind the motion to adjourn. Aye. Aye. Okay. Right. So. There were two waivers. The first was to extend the road beyond the 800 feet that our subdivision regulations um, limits. And we would uh, recommend that that be approved. Okay, is there a motion to approve the waiver for the? Motion to approve, waiver. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Son. Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay, second waiver. And the second waiver is to um, uh, not construct the sidewalk on the north side of the property, north side of the cul-de-sac, which we would have uh, support. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, well, James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, now is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> To adjourn. Uh, I'm going to assume that their surety is uh, the lot release. They're leaving the land as their surety. And we will correct that or it, it, note it if it needs to be corrected. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Now, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call, Larry Sand. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Now, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Road. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.